Slack is now one of the most popular messaging platforms for businesses to use. In this video, I'm going to share my top 10 tips and tricks to make you a Slack superstar. Hi, I'm Andrew, Salesforce Technical Instructor at Salesforce Ben. Our mission is to help you advance your Salesforce career. So whether you're just starting out or have a few years under your belt, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our extensive resources on salesforceben.com. Let's not waste any time and jump straight into it. Slack began as an internal tool for Stuart Butterfield's company, TinySpec, during the development of Glitch, an online game that was launched to the public in August 2013. Slack is an acronym for searchable log of all conversation and knowledge. On July 21st, 2021, Salesforce acquired Slack for a reported $27.7 billion. This makes Slack, at the time of recording, the largest acquisition Salesforce has ever made and the second biggest tech acquisition of all time. What exactly is Slack? Slack is a messaging app for businesses that connects people to the information that they need. The key to Slack is allowing people to work together as one unified team, which in turn transforms the way organizations communicate. Slack runs on the key principles of allowing users to work in a connected, flexible, and inclusive way. Less is more. When using Slack, remember, less is more. Multiple messages mean multiple notifications. Multiple notifications mean more distractions. If you have a long message you need to send, make sure to enable and use paragraphs in your messages. This can be enabled by going into your advanced preferences. At channel versus at here. When using channels, you are able to mention other users directly in your messages by using at, followed by the user's display name. But Slack also gives you the ability to notify the entire channel or even your whole workspace with two different commands, at channel and at here. You should be very careful when using either of these commands, especially in channels with many users such as general. The at channel command will notify everyone in that channel regardless of their status, whereas at here will only notify those who are online at that moment. These commands are designed for sharing important announcements that require everyone's attention, such as an urgent matter with a project. They aren't meant for sharing cat gifts, unless you're in a specific cat gift channel. One thing to bear in mind with these commands is that owners and admins can choose to restrict permissions for users who can use these commands. Drafting naming conventions for your channels is a great way of making sure everyone can find the channel's inf information that they are looking for quickly. Channels are listed alphabetically, so make sure to include prefixes to your channel names so they are grouped together. For example, for channels that support projects, you could set the channel name as project dash followed by the name of the project. For example, project dash flow migration or project dash lead gen. You could also create channels for your teams. The naming conventions here could be much simpler and just include the team name. For example, for a Salesforce team, you could set the channel name as SF team. Also, make sure to have the channel naming conventions documented and shared with everyone in your organization. There's no point in having a channel if it doesn't have a clear purpose. Make sure to add a topic and channel description so everyone can see what the purpose of your channel is. For such a simple tool, emojis in Slack can be very powerful. They're a simple way to quickly respond to a message with one click. You can also build these into your workflows. For example, people can put their looking emoji on something to tell everyone they're reviewing it, and then a check mark emoji when they've completed their review. Then we have threads. Threads are essentially ongoing conversations. They are perfect for collaborations with discussions and projects in a team channel. As threads won't bombard people in a channel with notifications and only alert those in the thread, you can ask for clarification on a topic or share ideas, safe in the knowledge everyone's unread indicator in a channel won't go berserk. If you have written a message in a thread, but then realize this would be worth also saying in the channel, you can use the also send to channel checkbox below your message. It goes without saying that Slack is a great place to share files collaboratively with your team. Upload any foundational files involved in a topic or project and post a welcome message to kick things off. You upload files in a similar way you would to an email by clicking the plus icon in your message window. These then stay within the channel, making the files easily available to access. This wouldn't be a full guide if I didn't tell you to utilize the do not disturb function. This is more of a feature for yourself than anyone else. We all need time to switch off and disconnect from our work lives. 
Slack allows you to do this by setting your working hours and only receive notifications within those hours. For example, if you set your hours for 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., if a message comes in at 7 a.m., you won't get any annoying wake up notifications. The same will be the case after 6 p.m. when you may just be sitting down for dinner. Do Not Disturb helps maintain your work-life balance. To make this even more simple, you can set your Slack settings to Do Not Disturb by using some quick and useful slash commands. If like many people, you use Google or Outlook for your calendar, it's very simple to sync these with your Slack account. All you need to do is install the Google or Outlook apps into your Slack workspace and link your accounts. You will then have the option to sync your status. So if you have a meeting scheduled in your calendar, your Slack status will update to reflect this. This is the perfect way to quickly see who is available and who is busy at any given time. If you want to get your team on a call and want something a little quicker than logging into Zoom or scheduling a Google Meet, huddles are for you. Slack huddles are a lightweight and audio first way to communicate inside a Slack channel or direct message including those with external partners. A typical conference call is scheduled for a specific time, normally has an agenda and has a set list of attendees. Slack huddles are more casual with no communicated agenda and open to anyone within your workspace. Slack huddles also now allow you to take notes in a huddle thread, share your screen, add reactions and emojis, and even turn on live captions currently only available in English. If you're on a free version of Slack, you can have a maximum of two people per huddle. On a paid version, this increases up to 50 people. Lastly, as Slack is now part of Salesforce, it won't be long before all Salesforce clouds will be deeply integrated. Currently in the Slack app directory, you'll find apps for Sales Cloud, Service Cloud, Quip, and Heroku. Customers can also use the Slack API to build a custom integration that connects Slack to other Salesforce services. We hope this video has given you some valuable tricks and tips on how to utilize Slack. If you've got any Slack tips, don't forget to put them in the comments below.